Okay, let's look at the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus, as well as what the three P's are and how they are used in assessment. So let's just quickly review patho diabetes mellitus. Remember that type 1 diabetes is when the immune system attacks and destroys all of the beta cells in the pancreas. The patient has absolutely no insulin production and is dependent on supplemental insulin. In type 2 diabetes, they either don't make enough insulin to meet their body's needs or they've become resistant to the insulin they do have, or it could be both. So it's possible that these patients need um, insulin if it's severe enough. Usually they can be managed with um, either diet and exercise or oral anti-diabetics. Click the link below or visit nursing.com slash NFN for a free NCLEX ebook covering the 77 key topics. So what does our assessment look like? Well, of course, we're going to see hyperglycemia. Now, diagnostically, we usually see something over 126 milligrams per deciliter for at least two episodes for an official diagnosis. And we'll also see hyperosmolarity because of that excessive glucose. Remember, that's when you have way more particles in your bloodstream than you usually do. So it's super concentrated situation. Both of those things, the hyperglycemia and the hyperosmolarity, is going to cause what's known as the three Ps. They're polyphagia, polydipsia, and polyuria. So in type 1 diabetes, a patient does not produce insulin, and insulin allows glucose to go from the blood into the cells and that's utilized for energy. When the glucose does not get into the cell, the glucose stays in the blood and that, that level rises. So the body tries to remove excess glucose by producing extra urine. The body then requires more water and we get hungry because our cells are starving for energy. So remember the three Ps. Now the other diagnostic criteria we use is hemoglobin A1C or glycosylated hemoglobin. That's gonna tell us the average blood sugar over the last three months. In diabetic patients, we're usually looking at something over 6.5, and our goal with therapy is to get them under 6. Now, again, because of retinopathy and neuropathy, we might see blurry vision, they might have numbness and tingling, and then they're going to have really poor wound healing because of their decreased circulation. If you need more help breaking down complex topics like this one, make sure to head over to nursing.com slash NFN. Click the link in the description below or scan the QR code to unlock your free NCLEX review that covers 77 must-know nursing topics. Make sure that you learn this, that we love you guys. Now go out, be your best self today, and as always, happy nursing.